CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... In our lives, we all travel to many places where we will be the stranger. The unknown waits for us in other countries, other towns, even new roads, a different turn on an unfamiliar street. And are we really any different from the traveler of ancient times? Aren't we still dependent on the kindness and goodwill of others? Even the most suspicious of people must ultimately be confronted with a situation where he must trust his money, his possessions, or even his life to a stranger. You're mistaken, Orville. I can leave here any time I want to. Stop pretending, Pamela. You know you can never leave Silver Tree Island. Yes, I can. No one ever leaves Silver Tree Island. And you know why. It isn't true. It's impossible. You know why now, don't you, Pamela? Don't you? Our mystery drama, The Island on Silver Tree Lake, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Victoria Dan and stars Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Introducing the new century, a Buick like you've never seen before. A little science. The fastback design is pure function. Ah, but the execution is pure Buick. A little magic. The trim new century has a new design, a new size. A little science. Yet inside, there's more head and leg room than last year. A little magic. Say, that wouldn't be the new Buick century, would it? Yes, sir, that's it. Boy, it looks so good, I can't believe it. Yes, sir. And all that room and luxury in there. I mean, it's hard to believe, you know? Yes, sir. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. How'd you guys do it anyway? Sir, you'd never believe it. They surely will have found you The amazing things you see The car they built the wonderful How can such things be? A little science A little magic A little science A little magic I'm Hyman Brown, producer-director of the Radio Mystery Theater. I'd like to tell you about our other drama series, the Radio Adventure Theater, heard on weekends on most of these stations. Exciting stories from the classics, like Ivanhoe, Captain's Courageous, Treasure Island, and The Gold Bug. Favorite characters of childhood, like Alice in Wonderland, Robin Hood, and Cinderella. We have stories of real-life heroes, too. Lewis and Clark, Charles Lindbergh, and some fine original scripts of fantasy and science fiction. Radio Adventure Theater is heard every Saturday and Sunday. Each story is complete, fully dramatized, with talented actors. Tom Bosley is your host. I hope you'll tune in weekends for these engrossing dramas on the Radio Adventure Theater over most of these stations. The world, they say, has gotten smaller. It grows smaller every day. This incredible shrinking process has to do with our advanced technology. There is scarcely a patch of ocean or earth anywhere that has not been duly accounted for on some vast atlas. The previous frontiers of mystery are rapidly losing their magic. The once untamable Amazon is falling victim to the bulldozer. Enchanted islands in the South Pacific are used for atomic bomb experiments. Still, with it all, there are places, even in this country, that remain relatively untouched by the mass of civilization. Places that we call the back roads of America. A 
Officer, I, I don't understand why you pulled me over. I, I uh, Good evening, ma'am. My name is Trooper Leroy LaRue, Jr. Your name, ma'am? Allen. Uh, Pamela Allen. Mm -hmm. my, my license is in my purse. I'll... Is your car, Miss Allen? Uh, no, I, I rented it at the airport in uh, Memphis. Where are you from, Miss Allen? Uh, it is Miss, isn't it? Uh, yes, I, I'm from New York. Miss Allen, are you aware there's a posted speed limit here? Officer, I wasn't speeding. The posted limit is 45. I was doing 45. <laughs> you can't give me a ticket just for that. <laughs> Miss Allen, now have I said one word about a ticket? Now, you obviously been seeing too many of those movies about cigar-smoking southern policemen picking on poor young motorists. Uh, I only now, meant... Now, listen. The limit means 45 miles an hour conditions permit. Now, you know what that means? Uh, it's just been a rainfall. Uh, this is the lake road, and it's bad enough when it's dry. It curves and snakes, and then, uh, you know, if you aren't familiar with it, well, it can be pretty dangerous. Uh, I see. Oh, thank you for the warning, officer. Hey, you're going to wedding, aren't you? Uh, how did you know? Over in Weaverville, right? Hmm? Right, but... Well, that fancy package with the bows on the seat next to you. Now, what else could that be but a wedding present? And who else is getting married tomorrow except Miss Sally Lynn Wilkie? You know Sally? No, her. <laughs> Listen, you're talking about the love of my cousin Earl's life. Now, it broke his heart when she went up north to that college. Now, he waited and waited for her to come home after that, but, oh, uh, no, she said she had to find herself. <laughs> Got herself a couple of interesting degrees. She's back home for good now. Finally caught up with her. Catches up with everybody sooner or later. Uh, uh, marriage, that is. No, I tell you, they're dropping like flies around me. Officer, I... Uh, but, uh, well, I see I'm being a bit of an annoyance. No, no, it's just that well, I... the truth is, Miss Allen, you know, you got me just a bit flustered. But you be careful now. It's nearly dark, and you have to be extra mindful of those sudden twists and turns. I appreciate your advice, Officer uh, LaRue. Mm -hmm. I I'll be as careful as I can. Well, we have had some terrible accidents on this part of the lake road. You know, cars skidding right in the embankment. Well, I'll certainly try to get to Weaverville in one piece. Okay, bye now. <laughs> bye. Sally Lynn. My old college roommate. Oh, I wouldn't make this trip for anybody except you. Whew. This really is the boondocks. Middle of nowhere. Oh, I'd hate to run out of gas here. Oh, oh that was close. Oh, th this road really is dreadful. The way it twists. Oh, that curve. I, I, I'm going into a skid. I, I can't stop. I, I'm going to go right off. What happened? Oh, I must have blacked out. I. Oh no! Oh, look at the car, the windshield, everything. What a mess! Mess! Well, at least I. I think to be in one piece. Now what am I? What am I supposed to do? I'm in the middle of nowhere. No phone, no, no houses. I, I guess I'd better start walking. I, I must have walked halfway around the lake by now. There's nobody. There's nothing. Oh, oh, wait a second. Oh, out there ahead. A dock. I, I think I see a boat. Oh, it is someone. Hey. Hey. Hey, hello there. What? Oh, who's there? Oh, oh, am I glad to see you, sir. I didn't think there was anyone around here for miles. Oh, I'm here. Always here. I just ran my car into a ditch a few miles back, and I... I, I would really appreciate some help. Oh, had an automobile accident, you say? Yes, where, where would the nearest gas station be? There ain't none except in town. Oh, that's over five miles in the dark. Well, but is there a house nearby? Nope. Not that I know of. Oh, but what's that out, out there? 
Out where? Uh, well, I, th- I think I see some lights out, out in the center of the lake. Oh. Oh, don't you know what that is? No. Should I? Well, that's the Silver Tree Lake Resort. Resort? <laughs> out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, not many people have heard of it. It's, it's very, uh, how do you say, exclusive? Uh, w- w- would they have a telephone there? You mean you'd want to go there? Well, yes, just to use their phone. Uh, well, I don't know. You make it sound as if they've got guard dogs or something. Oh, they do. A big brood of a German shepherd. Um, but he don't bark at me. I mean, in my boat. He knows me. I make deliveries at the island. Drop off guests a couple times a week. Supplies, the, the Sunday paper. Well, m- might you be able to give me a lift over in your uh, in your launch here? Oh, I'd be happy to oblige you, miss, uh, for a fee. Yeah, the going rate is half a buck. Well, all right. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'd take you for nothing, but it's been a slow week, and, well, the price of gasoline these days... <laughs> never mind, never mind. Here's your money, mister. Oh, uh... just call me Charlie. Ed, come on, hop in now. Watch your step. Here we are. Silver Tree Lake Resort. Oh, beautiful. What I can see of it. Oh, hey, hey, does he bite? Brucey, no, not at me, he doesn't. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy, Brucey. Well, follow me. I'll take you to meet the manager and his wife. They'll be up in the main lobby just ahead. Hey, anybody home? Well, Charlie, how are you? Hey, who is this young lady? Oh, Miss Pamela Allen. I'd like you to meet the owner and manager of Silver Tree Lake Resort, Mr. T.J. Harrison. Well, how do you do, sir? I, I I was hoping that perhaps I might use your phone. Oh? I, I just badly ruined my car. Yes, yeah, you had an accident. Hey, yes, yes, so you have, Miss Allen. I, I can see you. I can see you hurt yourself. No, no, n- not really. I, I would just like to use the phone. Oh, well, I'm afraid it's impossible. These switchboards out of order till the morning. Hey, that storm we had early this afternoon knocks the wires down. Oh, I see. You know, the best thing you can do now is to get some rest. We can put you up one of the guest rooms. There's plenty of space. Well, well I, I don't know. Uh, uh, what credit cards do you accept? <laughs> credit cards? Oh, uh, Miss Allen, you don't really think we charge you for our hospitality. I mean, to a traveler in distress. Well, this may be a hotel, but you're a guest of management. Now, haven't you ever heard of Southern Hospitality? Well, I... I appreciate it, Mr. Harris. Hey, uh, Varney. Oh, Varney. Come on out here, honey. Hey, uh, Varney, here's my wife. What is it, T.J.? I was just sitting down to dinner. Uh, honey, this is Miss Pamela Allen. She's uh, she had an accident with her car. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So I insisted she stay the night, you know, rest up. Of course. But I, I don't want to put you to any trouble. No, no, no trouble at all. Now, is it, Varney? No, no, of course not. I'll show you to your room. It's a lovely room, Mrs. Harrison. Please call me Vani. And I wish you'd call me Pamela. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your kindness. We're kind of a simple place here, but I think you'll find everything you need. Try to get some rest. You must have had quite an ordeal. Well, good morning, Miss Allen. Did you sleep well? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I-, I was wondering about the telephone. Well, I understand you didn't have supper last night. Now, I insist you sit right down this instant and have a nice big country breakfast. Oh, thank you, but but I never have much of an appetite in the morning. I really wanted to call the gas station about well, my now car. Look, this buffet. Now, what would you like? Hmm? Ham, sausage, hash browns, fresh root cup. Hey. Do you like sweet rolls? Just a cup of tea. Well, now you just sit right down at that table over there, and I'll have Orville bring you a tray. Good morning, Pamela. Did you sleep all right? Great. I, I want to thank you. Really. Uh, listen, Bonnie, I-, I don't mean to appear anxious, but are the phones still out of order? What? The telephones. 
Are they repaired yet? What telephones? You know, the ones that (laughs) that connect you to the mainland. We don't have any telephones here. What? But your husband told me last night... You must be mistaken. There have never been any telephones here at Silver Tree Island Resort. And here you thought the plot was never going to, as they say, thicken. Was T.J. Harrison so embarrassed about not having telephones at his little island resort that he'd actually lie about something so petty? Or is it really so petty? What ulterior motives could anyone possibly have for something like that? He must have lied for a reason. In any event, he'll have a chance to explain himself when I come back with Act Two. Hemorrhoid sufferers, the proof is here. Proof from leading doctors and hospitals of a medication that helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. It's doctor-tested, hospital-tested Preparation H. Hundreds of tests prove that in many cases, Preparation H gives prompt temporary relief of occasional pain and itch and helps shrink swollen, inflamed hemorrhoidal tissues. Preparation H, ointment or suppositories, use only as directed. Doctor-tested, hospital-tested Preparation H helps shrink swollen hemorrhoidal tissues. This is Helen Van Slyke. I wrote The Heart Listens and The Mixed Blessing. My newest paperback, The Best Place to Be, is the heartwarming story of Sheila Callahan. Widowed after 27 years of marriage, she suddenly faces a single life. From a tragic affair with a younger man to the ultimate understanding of herself and her children, Sheila experiences the emotions millions of women will recognize. I hope you'll like The Best Place to Be from Popular Library. Hello, this is Tony Randall. Doesn't it make you angry when something tragic occurs that might have been avoided? Well, birth defects are a tragedy that afflict over 250,000 infants every year in America, and the March of Dimes thinks it should make you angry, angry enough to do something about it. Many of those birth defects might be prevented. How? With good prenatal care. Prenatal care is the medical attention every pregnant woman needs to help safeguard her own good health and that of her unborn baby. It simply means seeing a doctor or going to a prenatal care clinic as soon as she thinks she may be pregnant. Prenatal care is following doctor's orders to eat nutritious foods, get plenty of rest, exercise in moderation, and avoid unnecessary drugs and medications. No one can guarantee a healthy baby, but prenatal care goes a long way toward protecting the unborn and the newborn. Give your anger some action, the March of Dimes way. Fight for your baby's health by seeing a doctor early and often throughout your pregnancy. Over 2,000 years ago, a Greek writer said, What is pleasanter than the tie of a host and guest? Things haven't changed much since then. Hosts still like to entertain, and guests still worry about overstaying their welcome. Pamela Allen, en route to the wedding of an old friend in the back country of Mississippi, has just spent the night at a hotel in the middle of a lake, following the promise of the hotel manager that the phones would be working in the morning. Now it seems her very gracious host neglected to tell her that there aren't any phones on the island. No phone? No, of course not. But why would your husband tell me there were phones if there really weren't? You were in such a state, he probably didn't want to upset you. What kind of a place doesn't have telephones? Pam, you have to understand, Silver Tree Island is a place where people come to escape the pressures of the outside world. They leave their cares behind. No television, no radio. No telephones. The people prefer it that way, and we cater to our clientele. I guess that makes sense, but still, I... Sure it makes sense. TJ is the perfect host. Oh, hey, here comes Orville with your breakfast. Thank you, but I'm really not very hungry. nonsense. You've got to eat something. You went to sleep on an empty stomach. Uh, Orville, this here is Miss Pamela Allen. Here's your tray. Orville is the resort social director. Entertains nightly in the Starlight Lounge. How nice. But we all help out in the dining room. Gives the place a homey touch, wouldn't you say? Bonnie, I I don't want to seem ungrateful. 
But, you see, I'm expected at a wedding this evening. I really have to get someone to tow the car. It's rented. I've got a lot to do. I was wondering if after breakfast... Hey, now, don't worry about a thing. Just be down at the dock in half an hour. Charlie comes with deliveries about then. He'll give you a ride back. Oh, that's a load off my mind. Thank you. I, uh... I've already had my breakfast, but you shouldn't be eating by yourself. Say, Orbit, why don't you sit here with Miss Pamela Allen? All right. Won't you excuse me? I think I see T.J. You're not eating anything? I never eat in the morning. Uh, Orville, uh, how, how long have you been working here at Silver Tree Island? Work? Well, that's what you do, isn't it? Your resident social director? I don't call it work. I call it music. But you'll hear me tonight after dinner. I won't be here. Sure. That's what they all say. What all who say? The guests. Oh, I- I'm not a regular guest. Well, they all say that, too. What are you talking about? Don't you know by now? They're not going to let you get away so fast. Uh, do you mean to say that... that they're going to try to get me to stay longer? As a regular guest? Well, you could put it that way, yes. That's ridiculous. Charlie's taking me back in his boat as soon as he drops off some supplies. Mm Mm-hmm. Why do you sound so skeptical? Skeptical? Heck, I'm not skeptical. (laughs) In fact, I'll walk you down to the landing myself. There's Charlie now. Right on schedule. Ah, I wish I could have found the Harrisons before I left. I wanted to thank them for their hospitality. Hey, Brucey. Here, boy. Come on. Come on. It has to be the gentlest breed I've ever seen. Don't let this pussycat of a dog deceive you. He's a German shepherd. And he can be fierce if provoked. Uh, you, you'd you better get back off the land. What is he growling at me for? That dock is his personal property. Get back. Get back off it. What's the matter? I told you. Brucey doesn't like people trespassing on his dock. But he didn't growl at me last night. That was different. But why? Because I was with Charlie? No. Because you were arriving. Not leaving. Brucey doesn't like to see visitors go. That's just wonderful. Oh, here's Charlie. I'm uh, sure he'll be happy to escort you. Hi, Charlie. Uh, What are you you doing at the dock this morning? I hope you don't mind, Charlie, but I was hoping to hitch a ride back to the mainland with you. Oh, you did, did you? Yes. Does she really think I'm going to take her back? What do you say? Well, after what you've seen. After what I've seen? What do you mean? Well, it's out of the question. Out of the question now. Now, if you'll just excuse me. Oh, I understand now. You, You want me to pay you, right? (laughs) <laughs> now you are a smart young lady. Is it still 50 cents? Uh, let me just, uh... Here. Do you have change for a $5 bill? Nope. Oh. Orville, could, could I trouble you? Sorry, I never carry money. Well, here then. Take the whole five. Are you kidding? It's worth it for me to get going. Well, not to me. I don't deal in paper money. It's 50 cents clear or no ride. But... That's five dollars. Perfectly good U.S. currency. Well, I'm not interested. The fee is 50 cents. Exact change only. You're the most unbelievable person I've ever met. Now, see what you've done. You've upset Brucey. You better come back to the hotel, then. How could anybody be so mercenary? Young lady, you can always complain to the management. I'm afraid my hands are tied, Miss Allen. Charlie is an independent operator. But surely, Mr. Harrison... Now, over the years, he's developed what might appear to outsiders as somewhat eccentric ways. And now, one of them is the 50-cent charge. In fact, he charges 50 cents for just about everything. It certainly is eccentric. Well, Mr. Harrison, I'm sure then you won't mind if I trouble you for the change of a... Change? Why, you don't understand, Miss Allen. I thought I explained to you last night. We're a hospitality house. We never accept money. 
But your hotel, surely you have... No, no, and you have a wrong idea about us, Miss Allen. We never charge our guests anything. What? Do you... Do you think I run this place for the money? Well, uh, uh, why else? No, no, no. This is not the kind of business you think. Charge our guests money? No. Our people are here to get away from the world. Now, money is the root of all anxiety and all frustration. Mr. Harrison, if you don't believe in charging money, it's no affair of mine. But I've got to be in Weaverville by early this afternoon. Now, first, you told me some story about there being phones on the island, which there aren't. And then your wife told me I'd be sure to get a ride back with Charlie, except now it appears I can't do that unless I come up with exactly 50 cents, which you say you don't have. Now, what is going on here, Mr. Harrison? Don't you know? No, I'm quite confused. Well, then I'll clear things up for you. We like you very much and would like to invite you to stay Stay. Here. That's right. You see, well, I, I wouldn't normally be so pushy, but Vani really likes you. And Vani doesn't often take to people. I mean, she really seems to get along with you. I'm very glad, but still... Uh, Vani, Vani has been ill recently. I am sorry to hear that. And uh, already you sort of, you know, brung, brung her spirit back into her face, the shine back in her eyes. Oh, there is nothing like the companionship of young people. Especially when her husband is uh, <laughs> such an old fogey like me. Oh, you're not old, Mr. Harris. <laughs> well, thank you, but the truth is I'm, I am twice as old as Vani, and sometimes there's that unavoidable, what, what is it they used to say, uh, generation gap. Well, at least, well, couldn't you stay the weekend? I told you, I have to be in Weaverville by this afternoon. Well, why don't we discuss this after lunch? After lunch? We just had breakfast. Oh, uh, will you excuse me, Miss Allen? I'm wanted at the desk. A new guest. Mr. Harrison, uh, I... After lunch, Miss Allen. Uh, talk to me after lunch. I don't know what you're so worked up about. Although I seem to be getting the runaround here. Do you? Really? What is this, some sort of inquisition? No, I just meant... Well, you seem to enjoy it here. A person has to be a fool to want to leave a place like this. Listen. That's a very rare nightingale. Stay, Pamela. I can't. I, I've got things to do. It would be so much better if you wanted to stay. You make it sound as if I have no choice. But you... You don't. What did you say? You're here to stay. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You can't go back. You know you can't go back. Nobody can ever go back. What? Nobody ever leaves Silver Tree Island. Oh, well, really? Ever. That's the price you pay instead of money. You never leave. I don't believe it. It's true, and you know it. Oh, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, quit joking around. It isn't funny anymore. I'm not joking. Look, I've got to get out of here. I, I mean, I left a $35 wedding present in an unlocked car, a rented car with a smashed windshield. I know. A 76 blue sedan. Needs a new windshield and some work on the front grill. How, how, how did you know what kind of car I was driving? Why shouldn't I know? T.J. told me. Mr. Harrison, but uh, how does he know? He knows everything. He always knows the circumstances of the death. The, the what? The death. You know, like your death. M my d death. What is it? He said it was uh, some kind of a head injury, I think. Your... <laughs> You're telling me that I'm dead. What do you think I'm doing? I don't like your sense of humor, Orville. It's very sick. Pamela, why don't you face facts? You had an accident. You died. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> and you're out of your mind. I'm alive. No. No, you're just a soul. 
like the rest of us. You know you're dead, and you know where you are. Oh, and where am I supposed to be? Where all souls go. The island of the dead. The island of the... what? Of the dead. Otherwise known as... Hades. Hades, the island of the dead? Is it possible that Pamela is actually dead? Is progress so universal a concept that the afterlife also changes with the times? The island of Hades becomes a homey resort surrounded by a pleasant lake. Or rather, do people see only what they want to see? We'll see what lies ahead when I return with Act Three. You may have fire insurance for your home, but True Value Hardware Stores suggest you get fire insurance for your family. Hi, Pat Summerall to explain. Get a General Electric Home Sentry smoke alarm to ensure your family of an early warning from the dangers of fire. The GE smoke alarm detects dangerous combustion particles before there's smoke, flame, or high heat. Then it sounds a loud warning siren that could save your family's lives, even at night when everybody's asleep. And right now, when you buy the General Electric AC model Home Sentry smoke alarm from True Value Hardware Stores, you'll get $2 back from General Electric during their GE rebate days. Insure your family from the dangers of fire 24 hours a day and get $2 back from General Electric when you buy the GE Home Sentry smoke alarm during General Electric rebate days, now through November the 12th, at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. True Value, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Today, there are millions of families overseas that are homeless, malnourished, destitute. With your help, CARE can start them on the road to a better life. CARE can provide them with enough food to feed their families. They can be given the means to grow their own food. With tools and equipment, they can build modest homes. They can dig wells so they can have safer water to drink. They can build schools for their children. Across the world, many families are without the means to help themselves. Through care, you can start them on the road to a better life by giving them the chance to work their way out of poverty. Send your check or money order to CARE, Box 576, New York 10016, or local care office. Thousands of years, Western civilization has held on to its belief of some kind of afterlife. Greeks and Romans had legends of an underworld called Hades, run by a gloomy Olympian god and his young, pretty wife. The dead reached Hades by ferrying across the dark river Styx and were greeted at the gates by a huge three-headed dog named Cerebrus. Now, in our story... We have a pleasant southern resort island, the owner and his younger wife, and an ominous German shepherd guarding the boat dock. If there are any parallels, well, they really aren't intentional. Hades, you're telling me that this place is Hades. It is. (laughs) This whole thing is ridiculous. You skidded off the road. All right. You say you blacked out? Yes. But you weren't in the car when you regained consciousness? No, I was on the grass somewhere. Somewhere? Don't you remember? Um, actually, it's all hazy now. Anyway, it's not important. Oh, but it is. You regained consciousness outside your car, a distance from your car. You were thrown from your car. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I, 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 I don't know. I'm... Thrown from a car, and you don't have a scratch on you. Going over 45 miles an hour. Don't you see? You're beginning to forget already. That's part of it. What kind of car were you driving? Um, 
Uh, I can't seem to recall. Mm -hmm. What color was it? Uh, I don't remember. You see? The wind of forgetfulness. Oh, you're just trying to frighten me. I'm just trying to make you see the truth. I, I, I've got to get moving or I, I'll be late. Late for what? Do you remember where you have to be? Of course. I, I've got to, uh, I, I've got to, um, go over to the, uh, <laughs> strange. I, I, I can't seem to, to... You remember? I told you. Face facts. You're a resident. A permanent resident of Silver Tree Resort. No. No, no, there, there, there must be some explanation. Pamela, Pamela, wait. You can't go. There's no way off the island, don't you see? Come on, Brucie. Let me go past. Come on, boy, come on, boy. I'm not going to steal the boat. He'll bite. He'll bite, you know. So if I'm bad, I won't feel it. Oh, you'll feel it, all right. I don't understand this. I, I don't understand any of it. Why won't anyone let me see? How are you feeling? Oh, Pamela, answer me. What have I done to make you angry? I want to leave. Nobody will let me leave. Is this such a bad place? No. Not really. Has anyone treated you unkindly, made you feel unwelcome? No. Then what's the problem? Bonnie, is this... Place really, really. Yes, it is. And am um, I supposed to be? Everyone here is dead. That's what makes Silver Tree Island Resort so uh, exclusive. The ultimate in exclusiveness, if that's the appropriate word. I'm really dead. Hey, it's not so bad. I'm. Twenty-seven years old. What, what, what did I ever do to Pamela? I was a lot younger than you when I came here. I cried and I wanted to go home, but... Well, what's done is done. I'm here. And it really isn't that unpleasant. We can be friends. Orville seems to like you and he usually doesn't bother with people. I'd be very flattered if I were you. Twenty-seven years old. I never really... I never really loved someone. You might as well face facts. Why? Because that's the way things are. Why do I have to accept that? Because you have to. That's why. Bonnie, I don't have to accept anything. But you do have Some to. Some people. Most people. Almost all people. But not me. And what do you intend to do about it? Bonnie, when I go into a store and they sell me something and I decide I don't want it, I go right back and I return it. Even if the store has a strict no-return policy, I return it and I get my money back. Do you know why? No. Because that's how I was raised. My mother told me, Pamela... Never let anyone sell you something you don't want to buy, and I never have. But this is different. How is it different? You're talking about a non-returnable item. That's where you're wrong, Bonnie. Everything is returnable. T.J., honey, Pamela here wants to talk to you. That's right, sure. Is uh, everything all right, Miss Allen? No, everything is not all right. No? Well, what's wrong? I, I'll take care of it right away. I am not pleased with the services of this establishment. What? How can that be? I find the quality not to my satisfaction. Well, uh, what exactly don't you like? Is it the food? You call that food? I've eaten sandwiches out of vending machines that tasted better. Oh, you can't mean that. I insist you provide transportation for me back to the mainland. Well, now, I will oblige you in any way your good host can, Miss Allen. And I'll improve your meals. I'll do anything a good host should. But the successful host is one who's made his guests feel uh, so welcome that they never wish to leave. And I fear I have not succeeded with you. But never mind. I am working on it. <laughs> Do 
you play very beautifully, Orville. I don't understand it, Pamela. What exactly do you want to get back to? I... I don't know. Then why are you so anxious to get back? It doesn't make much sense. All I know is... I'm not ready for... For this yet. No one ever is. I've got to leave while I still have this resistance. It'll pass with time. How long have you been here, Orville? How long? <laughs> oh, I don't know. An eternity, maybe. No, really. H how long? So long, I can't remember. But I know you can't ever leave here. I know someone who tried once. Who? There was this musician. He was at some kind of a concert and his wife was at home, alone. There was this terrible accident and the wife was dead. A man went out of his mind. He couldn't believe what had happened. I think I know that story. Do you? Yes, it's the story of... Well, let me tell you how it ended. The man knew where she'd gone. So he came here. Charlie took him across in his rowboat. There weren't power boats in those days. And he went before the king of the underworld to beg for the return of his wife. At first, the king refused. But then the musician started to play his lyre. He played a song. A song so sweet and sad about a young girl painting flowers in an open field. A girl that the king had loved at first sight and brought down to the underworld to be his queen. And the king was moved to tears, told the musician he could have his wife. He could return with her to the world of the living if only he didn't turn around and look behind him on the journey homeward. But he did look behind, didn't he? Yes. And Eurydice, the wife, vanished into dust, didn't she? Yes. Into dust. It was your wife, wasn't it? Yes. It was my wife. Times change. Names change. You're Orpheus, aren't you? It was so long ago. Sometimes I've almost completely forgotten about it. I'm sorry. Oh, about what? Listen, I never fool myself. I'm a musician first. A performer. That's what's the most important to me. That's my first and real love. The other kinds of love... Uh, they become gentle memories that become part of my music. But it's the music. That's what's important. Music. That's it. The music. What is it? Orville, you're going to help me get out of here. No, no, no. I, I don't want you to go. If you call yourself my friend, you'll help me. But what can I do? I used to be quite a mythology buff, Orville. I remember some more details about the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. He was the greatest musician the world has ever known. I know that. Isn't it also legend that he played music so moving, so exquisitely touching, that he caused all who heard it to lay down and weep? How did he get past the gates of Hades, Orville? How did he get past that ferocious three-headed monster, Cerebrus? I... I don't... You know how. He played a song so sweet and gentle. The huge animal wept. It became a lullaby. And soon Cerebrus was fast asleep. Then he just walked right on past the sentinel and into Hades... And that is how I'm going to walk right out of here. Or swim, if that's what it comes down to. I, I can't do it this time. Why not? I don't want to. I, I like you. I want you to stay. Didn't you tell me that you were an artist first? I am. So, let's see how much of an artist you really are. Can you create another legend now? Or do you really have doubts that you've lost the old touch? Is that what it really is, No. Orville? No, I still have it. Then, show me. Show me, Orville. <sighs> Better than I thought. I won't have to swim. I can take 
Charlie Lamont. I don't know, Pamela. Start playing, Orville. Play more sweetly than you've ever played before. Just lovely, Orville. Oh, I'm a boy again. I'm on the high seas, cresting those waves, those oars. My muscles are rippling. I'm cutting those oars through the waves like a knife through butter. Oh, that's beautiful. about him. Charlie's all taken care of. Now get rid of this dog. Here, Brucey. Here, boy. Now go ahead. Hurry. I don't know how long I can hold them. Thank you, Orville. Thank you. Hurry. Hurry. I'll never forget you for this, Orville. I'll never forget. Never forget. Hey! Hey! Never forget. Miss Allen, Miss Allen, are you all right? Officer. Officer. Yeah, Leroy LaRue Jr., you remember me, don't you? It's still nighttime. How, how can it still be nighttime? Oh, boy, you you gone into one heck of a skid, miss. Oh, look at this car. For a minute, I thought you were dead. I, you really look dead. I'm... I'm all right. I, I, I feel fine now. I, I don't understand it. I, I could have sworn you were dead. But the dead don't come back to life, do they? No. No. They don't, Officer LaRue. Of course. They don't. Or do they? After all, anything is possible in this day and age. Anyhow, who is to say whether or not this wasn't all some dream? Maybe there really isn't some actual life and death struggle that has gone on since the beginning of time. Maybe there is really no place called the Isle of the Dead. In any event, one thing we do know for sure is that this is a place right here where you'll be when I return shortly. I remember how we loved caramel apple time when I was a kid. Dad got the apples, the biggest, juiciest kind. Mom had all us kids unwrap the craft caramels. She'd say... Anybody who doesn't help won't get a caramel apple. We never needed coaxing. Those apples looked so chewy and caramely sitting there on the counter, we couldn't wait for them to cool. It isn't autumn without them. Kraft caramels make the best caramel apples. The recipe's on specially marked bags, along with five sticks inside. It's only the radio. This is Dick Van Dyke. And frankly, I get scared when I think of earthquake, fire, flood, or hurricane. We almost always lose our normal means of communication. But who's there ready to help? The radio hands. If you'd like free information about the amateur radio service, write the American Radio Relay League, Newington, Connecticut, 06111. Over. to pay for something you don't want at the moment. Some people can be mighty persuasive salesmen, but the fault, dear Brutus, is truly with the customers who so readily purchase whatever is foisted upon them. With most of us, we are so ready to accept our fates because someone tells us that is the way it is to be. But is it? Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Lloyd Batista, Terry Keene, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. 
And now, a preview of our next tale. It all looked so easy. Ah, who's trying to knock off your bank, chum, huh? Yeah, then what? Well, I've cased this little neighborhood bank corner of Stillwell and Seven. Now, Friday should be the big day when the cash is still alive, not buried in a vault. You drive. That's all the risk you take. I pay off one third. Yeah, is it worth it? <laughs> you gotta know it is. That's payday for the consolidated machine plant. There's like 150,000 riding on this. You want in? Hmm? Yeah, you got me. I want in. When? Next Friday. Take off sick. In the morning, you pick up the getaway car. From then on in, it's smooth sailing. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.